God is moving on the streets. If we can touch that one, that one gang member with that one word, we can reach entire gangs. We can reach entire cities. We the people of God are going to bring the light into the darkness. They're like sheep without a shepherd. They don't know him yet. A lot of times they feel trapped. Anyone that's growing in light is going to have an increasing heart for those who are in darkness. Go in his power and in his love and demonstrate who he is. I think you people made a believer out of me. Can we send him out two by two. To a wounded and dying world. Not to condemn, but to love. Know his love, man. He, he really loves you. The dead rate, the sick heal, devil cast out in great measure, the poor looked after, and it should be normal Christianity. God's heart burns for the lost. And he wants us to take the prophetic to the streets. Welcome to Extreme Prophetic. My name is Patricia King, and today's program is all about praying for household salvations. I can hardly wait. James Gall is our guest, and we're going to go into prayer and believe for you and yours to come into fullness in God. Welcome to Insights. I've got my good friend James Gall with me here, prophet, seer, intercessor. And today, James, we are going to be praying for household salvations. That's right. We're going I'm to go excited. for the whole family. That's aren't right. We? My faith level is up over the top here. I just love this subject, and yeah. I have mega faith for praying in families. Our That's whole family right. is saved. When I got, wow. when I came to Jesus, um, I was the only one on my side of the family that was saved and Ron didn't have anyone on his side. And uh, so anyways, I came to the Lord and, and just began to pray in the family because I read a scripture out of the Bible that says, if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved in your house. Wow. Yeah. Now that's Acts 16, verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved and your whole household. That's right. That's Everyone great. thought I'd gone nuts, yeah. you know, and I gave my heart to Jesus. But, you know, I just continued to just pray. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a revelation for people to get saved. It you does. know, it's not like a good argument or, you yeah. know, you know, That's you right. can't convince them intellectually. It takes a revelation. That's right. And my husband, um, he was not happy at all that I'd become a Christian <laughs> because he, all he knew was, I guess, religion. You uh -huh. know, he knew forms and systems and yeah. codes and stuff like that. And so he wasn't impressed at all. And uh, we had had a very close relationship. And all of a sudden that year, because I was a Christian for 11 months before Ron got saved. And so in that year, it was a very difficult time because he was like, didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus or yeah, the Bible sure. or church or anything. And Jesus had become number one on my priority yeah. list. I mean, I was all consumed by him. And I was, was passionate. <laughs> and now your husband was number two. That's right. Yeah. And so it was a difficult time for him. But, you know, I just continued to pray. And I prayed on that scripture, That's you correct. know, Acts 16, 31. I thought, Lord, your word says that if I believe on you, mm -hmm. that I'll be saved and my house. And there's That's one right. in Peter that talks about that the husband, husband shall be sanctified. The unbelieving husband shall be sanctified by the believing wife. Awesome. So I would stand on that and I, I say, Lord, I just believe that you're going to mm. do it. Well, one night huh. I'm asleep beside my husband. He gets up in the middle of the night, wakes up and sees Jesus at the foot of his bed. Well, that's pretty good. That's good for starters. Yeah. He said, um, what is this? <laughs> Jesus, he who must are, be real. Who are you? <laughs> Patricia, I know, but who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then within that week, um, I was able to lead run to the Lord. And that's it awesome. started at that visitation. Hey, and it stuck too. It stuck. He's serving God yeah, to this very day. Right. I mean, that was about 30 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it was wonderful. And, um, and, and then we saw our whole family. My sister got saved. My mom and dad got saved. My brother got saved a number of years later, but he got mm -hmm. saved. So that's my whole immediate family. That's I led great. my grandmother to the wow. Lord, uh, my grandfather and my grandmother on my dad's side. I just led the whole family to the Lord. That's Isn't that awesome. fun? It is. You know, our family on my mother's side, the Burns, people are believers. But on my dad's side, the Gauls, it wasn't that way. You know, hard working Germans and stuff like that. And, but when my mom and dad got married, then my mom wins my dad to the Lord, just like you're talking about. And then my dad was the oldest of seven kids. And then one by one, the siblings start meeting Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you, just like as Patricia's talking about her family, and I'm just sharing some of my Gaul heritage side, 
God can do it in your mm -hmm. family too. It's sort of like lining up dominoes, you know that little game, and you touch the lead one, then they all fall down, and that's what go. can happen. I have absolute 100% faith <laughs> that if a believer mm -hmm. trusts God's Word and prays for their family to get saved, that it is impossible for them not to get saved. Wow. Impossible. Because to do so would be to deny God's Word, mm -hmm. you know, and He doesn't lie. That's He's great. not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of a man that he should repent. And I had mm -hmm. um, just recently, I was trying to help a friend through mm -hmm. a situation because her family member had not um, confessed mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. In fact, the exact opposite was mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, uh, uh, belligerent even, you know, like yeah. when you'd start talking to him about things of God. But um, I was just in, in encouraging her and mm -hmm. I said, you know, um, the the word says that he'll be saved because mm -hmm. you and your household That's will right. be saved. In Acts 2 8, it says, Ask of me and I'll give to thee the heathen for thine inheritance. That's great. So all we have to do is ask. That's right. Now, if we got to heaven after believing all that, God's word, if we got to heaven and didn't find our loved one there, and I know that this is going to sound mm -hmm. very strange to some people, but I'll clarify it. If we didn't find them there after believing in the promises mm -hmm. of God, we could actually take God to court. Wow. That's because strong, isn't it? Because he hasn't fulfilled his word. Because in the law, in the written yeah. word, there you go. he told us that as covenant children, wow. if we prayed according to his will, he'd hear us, he'd give us what we requested. We know that that's his will for all people to be saved. We know that he said, ask of me and I'll give to you the heathen for your inheritance. Right. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, you that's and your right. house. You know, um, uh, when you pray, believe that you received and that's you shall right. have it. And so, of course, we would never have to do that to God. Yeah, Why? Right. Because he would always come through on his promise. He's faithful and he's true. He's absolutely faithful. That's right. And so um, I've just been trying to encourage people with that. Like, I used to nurse um, before I uh -huh. um, went into full-time ministry, so I was a huh. cardiovascular nurse. Oh, wow. So I was involved in a lot of cardiac huh. arrests and rescuing lives wow. and all that kind of stuff before. Probably saw some near-death experiences I saw near-death and I saw wow. death experiences. Yeah. But I will tell you this, is that after I became a Christian, um, I nursed many people in their last mm. moments and watched them wow. come to Jesus. That's awesome. I led many people to the Lord in their last 15 minutes, sometimes in their last five minutes of life. That's I awesome. led them to Jesus Christ. You know, those last moments, even last seconds, can be the very most important. I have a dear friend who lives in Israel, Alvner Bosky, and, and he grew up in the Quebec part of Canada. And his mother being Jewish, she hadn't come to faith in Jesus as her Messiah. But then Alvner got a dream. And in this dream, it is revealed to him that his mother made it to heaven, that she met Yeshua, she met Jesus. Wow. And there was a moment there where she came like out of her sickness or a coma or something like at the end. And Avner got to have a time of interaction with his mom. And so we're just believing and rejoicing that his mom made it to heaven. And what we're talking about isn't just something for an Avner Bosky or a right. Patricia King or everyone. James Gull. It's for everyone, whosoever believes. Yeah, and that's a key. You have to believe that promise, yeah, don't right. you? Do you know how I got saved? I actually got born again in a near-death experience. I wow. was I was in a um, coma. I was unconscious. Um, I was in a uh, very close to death. I was pregnant with my youngest son. Wow. And during that time, I was not conscious. Um, mm -hmm. No one could get through to me, although I could. I was aware of what was going on in the room, but I right. couldn't express myself or anything. And um, Jesus came to me in a vision. First of wow. all, the devil came. Wow. And he um, asked if I would commit my, mm -hmm. my son to him. Wow. And um, then he faded out. And that was in an audible voice that he spoke in. Open vision, audible voice. Well, it was open, closed eye because I was mm -hmm. unconscious. But then Jesus came into the vision. And I didn't actually see him fully, but his arms were stretched out. At least that's what it felt like. Yeah. And his, his voice spoke heart to heart with wow, me. That's and awesome. he said, come to me. Yes. And I just cried out. I couldn't talk. I couldn't express myself out loud, but I said in my heart to Jesus, I said, Jesus, if you're real, That's right. I want to give my life to you. That's great. I had a choice right at that point. Now, if I had gone on mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. the realm of time at that time, lost my life within the realm of time, I'm absolutely convinced that I would have been in heaven with the Lord because he saw my heart of faith. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, but later on, of course, I, you know, I got delivered out of that dilemma. Yeah. And then six months later, someone came and actually preached the gospel to me where I received Jesus yeah. as my Savior in, in prayer out loud. That's awesome. You know? But and that's something that burdens my heart is obviously for whole 
family salvations, but also for the backslider mm -hmm. to return to the Lord and to be able to live in the fullness of God's yep. purposes and destiny for their life. Right. And one time I was telling you last night about this vision that I mm -hmm. had and back when our kids were a little younger and, and we were living in South Kansas City area and I was down on the, the porch uh, on, on the back side of our house. And there was a swing set there in the yard and everything and the slide and a little swimming pool. And our kids, a couple of the kids were on the swing set, you know, just playing around. And then in an open vision, extreme prophetic moment, <laughs> you know, in this vision superimposed over the natural, I saw a man on his back going down the slide head first, go zoop, fall into the swimming pool. And I go, what is that? And immediately the Holy Spirit whispered back to me and he said, I will restore the backslidden man into the pool of my I purpose. I love that. Isn't that I love awesome? that. That is that is great. But and we it's gotta fun pray too. it. That's right. That's, Call that it. is the key. It is. You see, there's all these promises out there. They're all given to us. Even the promise of salvation That's right. is for every person. But unless a person receives that a promise by faith, even though it's out there for everyone, it's not gonna benefit them. And as believers, we've been given all the promises. Everything that pertains to life and to godliness has already been given to us. Every blessing in that spiritual places, all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places have been given to us in Christ. But unless we receive those by faith, appropriate them by faith, we aren't going to have any benefit. Yeah. So there are promises that say your household shall be That's saved. Right. But if you don't believe it, yeah. and if you don't believe for the backsliders to come That's back. Right. Like I remember when my youngest son was mm -hmm. backslidden. He was out partying it up and all that kind of dangerous stuff. Yeah. You know, I was doing a lot of dangerous stuff back then. Yeah. But the Lord gave me a promise out of Isaiah 59, 21. And it says, this is the covenant that I have with you, hmm. that the same spirit that's in you and the word that's in you will not depart from you or from your children or your children's children from this time forth and forever. You know, you need to speak that right now to the viewers because you said this is the covenant that's for you. And as you're speaking that, I'm just feeling like there's people out there saying, I've got a son like that. I've got a grandson. And I think you just need to release that right now I will now then. Him. You know, um, that promise came to me so strong. It was a rhema word that the Holy Spirit quickened. But the key there is it was my covenant. It didn't depend on what my son was doing or what he wasn't doing. The Lord told me, he says, I have a covenant with you so that the spirit that's in you, which is the Holy Spirit and the word, the holy word of God, the revelation of the word that is in me would not depart from me or from my children or my children's children. And so that night I just stood on that promise and I said, devil, you will be sorry you ever tried because you cannot have my son. That's and right. it settled something in the spirit right then and there. And for you that are watching this program, That's if you right. have backslidden children out there or backslidden husbands, you know, you can claim the promises of God. They're yes and amen to you. And those, those backslidden children and those backslidden loved ones, they'll come back because God has a covenant with you in Christ. That's right. And we need just to pray the word, believe the word, and ask God for the fullness of destiny. This is actually all about destiny. And it's about eternity. I mean, if God wants to like to, to heal somebody, and he does, how much more does he want to save somebody in answer to prayer? And so right now, I just actually see somebody named Darcy. And I just want to encourage, somebody's praying for someone named Darcy. I'm just going to say, the Holy Spirit is going to bring Darcy back to himself, back to the Lord. And it's like Darcy's heart turned cold and actually maybe even got involved in some occult type stuff. But I just say that's but for a brief moment. And that dark shadow, it's over Darcy. I just speak to that right now and I command that shadow to lift off right now. I just say, Darcy, come back to faith. Come back to the Lord. Your heart is going to be turned yeah. hot on fire and you're going to end up being radical for the Lord Jesus. Right on. You know, I think that in this whole scenario of, of household salvations, backslidden kids and all that yeah. kind of stuff, is that probably our biggest failure is a prayer failure. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we tend to talk about our problems more yeah. than pray about our That's problems. Right. So we say how bad things are and, oh, yeah. isn't that terrible? And my kid's out doing this and, you know, my husband's out doing that or my yeah. wife's, you know, right. falling away or whatever. Right. But if we would just go to the Lord and pray in the promises, right. the word doesn't return void. It accomplishes right. everything that it's sent to do. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to encourage you right now that as you're watching to begin to pray the promises of God. 
they will not fail you. God gave them. And there are promises here that, that say your household shall be saved. And that includes, you know, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your, your spouse, your kids, everyone involved in your household. I mean, you might even want to include your dog. Yeah. And now, I mean, you know, yeah. uh, we got to well, be a little anybody, bit careful with that. But, you know, if anybody if who's in living in your household. You yeah. know, I mean, in our situation, yeah. we have people who live with us. We're just going to believe for everything that's in our sphere or our domain. And so we just each, we just bring them all to the Lord right now. And we just pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send laborers yeah. across each one of their lives. Do you know what? My dog, I think, went to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's horses there. Duster was a Christian dog. Well, great. Yep, Duster was, and it got eaten by a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get filled with the spirit and yep in tongues? Well, you know, when we used to be in prayer meetings, we would put his paw up on people. And, pray, you know, as we were praying for them, very sensitive to the Spirit of God. Awesome. Yeah, so. Cool. That's where my faith is at. That's fun. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back for God Talk. And we're going to actually pray into all this stuff and build your faith up a little bit more because we expect your households to be faith, uh, saved. And our team is praying for you. Um, we pray for our partners every day, but we pray for our viewers too. And we're expecting your households to be saved in Jesus. Amen. Do you desire anointed teaching, prayer, impartation, and prophetic words that speak personally to your heart? Would you like an online shopping mall that can resource your life with life-impacting teachings? All of this and more can be found on ExtremeProphetic.com. Visit us today online. Everything on the site is available to you on demand to facilitate your own lifestyle and schedule. your faith to believe for your whole household to be saved. And we're believing for miracles to be dropped out of heaven into your household so that you can have a, a life with your family like heaven on earth. Awesome. <laughs> That's cool. That's great. And you know what? When we're praying for um, household salvations, we need laborers, right? That's right. Jesus gave us a word about this, and Jesus' words are always answered. Mm. They're just Jesus, God answers Jesus' prayers. Here's what Jesus, God told Jesus to pray. He said, Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers into the field. There you go. And I have a, this friend named Dick Simmons, and, and he's an older gentleman now, lives in Washington, D.C., and has this prayer ministry and used to live in Bellingham, Washington, right on the Canadian border. And one time he took God's word right here. He was ministering on the, on the banks uh, of the river outside New York City, and he was crying out to God in the middle of the night, and he said, I pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers into the field that night. The Holy Spirit fell on a little skinny preacher in the state of Pennsylvania named David Wilkerson. Wow. And he got his call <laughs> to New York City, which resulted in the founding of Teen Challenge, World Challenge, and then obviously later Times Square Church. Wow. Your prayers can release laborers into the field, and that will make an enormous difference. And that's one of the key ways of praying your family into God's family is to call forth yeah, for laborers to be released. Right Pray for them. Pray for them in the workplace. Pray for them in the school. Yeah. Pray for them wherever they are. Pray for them at the gas station. That God would release laborers across people's lives. That is such a key thing because sometimes they won't listen to us anymore. That's right. You know, yeah. I remember nursing uh, this one, one man. Um, he was dying of cancer and in uh -huh. tremendous pain. Yeah. And so um, I was called in to help uh -huh. that night. So I was an on-call nurse. And uh, so I came off the elevator only to meet this other Christian nurse. And she mm -hmm. said, I can't, couldn't believe it wow. when they told me that you came on because this man has had three Christian nurses. So for the last 
20 or uh, yeah 24 hours he's had three Christian nurses wow. and she said and now you're coming on this man is destined to be saved but mm. she said he is the roughest toughest wow. guy he is so resistant to the gospel you have wow. no idea so I went in there and it was true you know he was and so I just began to pray a little bit and he mm. says what are you doing you know and yeah. he was just yelling at me and and um, so I started to share the gospel with him and and he was he just rose up in this strength I don't even know where he got the strength from it was probably right. a demon or yeah. something right something because in the natural he he wasn't able to do that he was dying he was yeah. on his you know taking his last breaths huh. practically so I said to him whoops I, I, I said to him I said sir you know all I can lose is my job but you can lose your soul and I'm wow. not about to let that happen so I'm going to continue to pray mm -hmm. and preach and you better get used to it because I'm just going to go yeah. for it and so I just continued to do it well finally to make a long story short mm -hmm. He says, okay, 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 because nothing, um, nothing was diminishing the pain, nothing that we were giving him, nothing was working on him. He says, okay, okay. I said, okay, what? He says, I'll receive him. Wow. I said, all right. So I prayed. He followed in prayer. He received Jesus. I saw an absolute change come over him. Hmm. Peace fell on him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And within the next 20 minutes, he went on to be with the Lord. I'm getting him ready for the doctor to come in and that and as his wife comes back with her daughter and I said you know while you were gone your husband expired and she wow. burst into tears wow. and I said you know I just feel led to tell you that he made it right with his maker before he went on she said what do you mean by that <laughs> And I said, well, what I mean is, is that I preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to him, and he prayed and accepted Jesus Christ oh, as awesome. the Savior. And she said, you're kidding. That can't be possible. Um, she said, I have been married to this man for many years, and he has resisted the gospel our whole married life, has made it so hard on me. And I thought that when he got cancer, he would bow with me then, but he just got worse, wow. worse, worse, worse. And um, she said... It's, it's just almost unbelievable that he's come to know the Lord. I almost lost faith. And I said, you know, God heard your prayers all those years, and his word is good, and you prayed for him to be saved, and now he is. And you were the answer to her prayers. Exactly. She prayed to the Lord, and God sent you. Harvester. That's right. Now, let's pray right now That's right. for our viewing audience. We want to pray for you because hmm. you have unsaved loved ones, some of you and you need labor sent to them and you need God's revelation to come to them. So let's pray. Father, we believe that mm -hmm. everyone who's watching this program, every single person yeah. that has an unsaved loved one mm -hmm. that is in faith to see you yes, move Lord. upon them, we believe to mm -hmm. claim their souls for you. We ask, Lord God, that you would send out laborers yes, into those harvest fields. Lord God, that the harvesters would be released, that you send angels and your people and send forth revelation on their behalf, that you would connect into every person's prayer and Amen. bring forth the answer beyond anything that they could even imagine in Jesus' name. That's great. Become a Breaker Team member today and partner with us in God's media army and harvest teams through your monthly financial gift of $30 or more. As a partner, you are prayed for every day by skilled intercessors on our team. You receive special gifts, reduced registration fees, and exclusive privileges during many Extreme Prophetic sponsored events. As a Breaker Team financial partner, you receive the Breaker anointing that rests upon Extreme Prophetic. Partner with us today and join the Extreme Prophetic family. There's a mother watching the program and you have a son, his name is Timothy. And you actually named him Timothy because of the Bible and you know God gave you the name and right now he's being anything but a Timothy he's he's really been causing you a lot of grief and the Lord says don't let the negativity of everything that's going on in his life get to you you just go before your daddy in heaven and call forth that revelation of salvation because that young man has an amazing call upon his life he's going to be a very strong leader in fact right now he's a bit of a leader but in the wrong in the wrong camp, but that's going to turn around, but he's going to take a lot of prayer. It's going to take a lot of prayer, but just storm heaven and call forth the destiny of that leadership mantle that's on him to work and labor in the vineyards of the Lord. Call that forth in Jesus' name because it's coming. There's a couple on the, the wife, I believe, is watching the show right now. And your husband you could be around 37 years old, and he's basically he's backslidden. And here's the problem. 
He's a modern day Jonah. He's got a call of God on his life and he's just flat out running because he's afraid and he even comes from some kind of a pastoral family and his background and he saw some things that happened in, in his own father and mom and, and he doesn't want that to get repeated and so he's just kind of hung everything up and just said, hey, just forget it. I mean, if, you know, if it doesn't work, I, I mean, I'm just going to like go dive into all the stuff, okay? But I just want to say to this Dear wife, okay, continue to believe the Lord. Continue just to love this man. I tell you, you can love the darkness out of this man. And God's call is upon him. And don't forget this. Remind God of his word. And I just send a word out right now to the backslidden husbands. And I say, come on home. I say, there's room in the Father's house for you. Come on back. You don't have to be tough. You can be tender. Come on back. There's room in the Father's heart for you. I'm seeing a vision right now of, a, of spilt milk all over the floor, and um, I'm getting this phrase that says, you can't cry over spilt milk. There's someone watching the program that you made some mistakes in the past, and as a result, it affected some family members, and you're really feeling remorse over that, but you can't cry over spilt milk. Our God is a redeeming God, and He can redeem our worst mistakes and turn them around for something really good. It can all be bought back unto goodness. And so don't live in the past. Don't live in the mistake. Uh, get the, the blood of Jesus to cover that and move on. But move on in faith, not remorse. You know, God can turn tragedy into triumph. And I just feel that there's people out there who actually are watching this and you're kind of like what's called displaced people, sort of like in the United States in recent months where there was the Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita and all the people were displaced or the tsunami that happened in Southeast Asia. Well, I just want to say just right now, triumph is going to come out of tragedy. And right now we're just going to believe the Lord as you're praying for, for those people in those displaced situations. We just speak destiny over their lives. We just call them home and we speak angelic visitations are coming. You just name their names right now. Name their names. You got some family members. It might be in Sri Lanka. It might be in India. It might be wherever. But just name their names before the name of God. I tell you, angels are being released on their way. There's going to be angelic encounters. There's going to be dreams, visions, supernatural encounters are coming. Your family members and these displaced people's ways. I see an African American family right now and I just tell you that's going to be household salvation. We're talking about this for you and your whole house. I just speak forth a word of faith right now. I just say your whole family is coming to the Lord and all of their names are going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thanks so much for joining us on today's program. It's been wonderful to have you. If you've been watching the program and enjoying it, why don't you pray about becoming a Breaker Team partner? You can get more information on that online. But I have a special destiny word for each and every one of you right now, and it's this. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really does. Don't you ever doubt that. And that promise is for you and your household. So join us next time, and maybe we'll meet you online this week at Extreme Prophetic. Your prayers can get poured out on somebody else's head too, and you can ruin somebody else's life for Jesus' sake, that they too could never ever be a successful sinner. This though is a real amazing subject. Eternity depends in part on your prayers, and you can impact people's lives just like this picture of this gal praying for this man. I tell you, call out to God, because whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.